All right, my first React app. Let's get it. How do I make this? Let's see. In PX create React app test app. Hey guys, so I've been coding for about four and a half months now. And when I was first getting into it, I put a lot of thought into what language I wanted to learn. And I decided to go with JavaScript. Now, when learning JavaScript, there's a ton of information out there, okay? There's a lot of stuff about JavaScript, about different frameworks, about different libraries. And when you're first getting into that, you don't know what any of that stuff is, okay? So it was around the time when I finished my first Udemy course on front-end web development that I stumbled across something called React. I would watch a lot of YouTube videos and read different blogs and kind of see which direction I should start going in to continue learning more JavaScript. And almost everything I looked at, literally, almost everything I looked at would mention React and how powerful React is and how useful it is and how you have to add it to your stack. So I was maybe a month or two in and decided, hey, I don't know what to do. Let's see if I can learn React. Let's see what React's all about. So I jumped into it. At this point, I really haven't had much experience. I finished the Udemy course, and then I worked through the headfirst JavaScript and the headfirst HTML and CSS book. That was it. But when I decided to jump in and finally read the source documentation about installing it and getting it up and running, I was lost. Lost. I was like, what? I need Node? Node.js and NPM? What are those even? How am I supposed to get those? And right away, just from that, I was scared off almost immediately almost immediately I, I was done i was done i didn't understand that i didn't know what node was i didn't know what npm was at this point i wasn't even using linux like the command line terrified me none of that made sense yet so i decided to step back for a bit and chose to work through the odin project instead which is a great resource by the way i mean highly recommend the odin project i'm still working through it but in hindsight, stepping back was the best decision I could have made. At that point, I didn't understand anything about OOP or object-oriented programming or modularized code. So even then, I probably would have been even more lost if I started it that day. So I'm glad I took a step back. That was a great decision. If you're new to coding and you're not sure what I mean by object-oriented programming or modularized code, then you probably aren't ready for React yet. I'd recommend you take a step back like I did and do some projects that focus on using OOP or modularized code and start implementing that. Or you can do what I did and just go start the Odin project. If you work through the JavaScript course in the Odin project, you'll stumble across all of it. They have great projects for you guys to do and it goes in order, it introduces you to objects first in JavaScript and then has you building projects. Then it's gonna introduce you to modules and then have you building module based projects or modularized code. If you're unsure about that, just chill for a bit, hit up the Odin project. That's how I leveled up myself. So highly recommend yet again. So let's fast forward now a bit. I'm working through the Odin project and boom, they have a section on React. <laughs> now, by this time, I'm comfortable with Node, I'm comfortable with NPM, and I've used a little thing called Webpack, which was probably the hardest thing I've had to configure up to this point. Still, it's still, it's still very complicated to me. I'm like, I'm working through it, I'm learning, but it's still uh, something I'm working on. So setting up React at this point was a breeze. Super simple. I just followed along with the source documentation and boom, created my first React app through the command line. Now React lets you do some really cool stuff. I've only been working with it for a month now, but already I'm, I'm a big fan of how simple it makes certain things, okay? I'm not gonna go too in depth in this video with what React can do, but I'll show you a simple and fun example, all right? All right, so I threw this together real fast. This only took about 10 minutes. I wanted to build this just to show you guys what React can do, even with simpler projects. Like you don't have to have some super complicated project or application that you're building. You can use React for simple things too, and it makes it so much easier. So let's take a look. So as you see here, we have a blank div and a button in the middle that says change color. Now, what do you think happens when I press that button? Let me know in the comments below. I'll give you guys a second to think about it. Are you good? If you guessed that it changes the color of the background div, you win. Good job. All right, so as you see, no matter how many times I press the button, the background color is gonna change. It's completely random, and it's gonna change every time you do that. Now in React, that's really easy to do. It's really simple, it doesn't take too much code. 
and it's very straightforward. In vanilla JavaScript, I'd probably struggle a bit more. It's easy enough to manipulate the DOM in vanilla JavaScript, but React just makes the process so much simpler. So let's take a look at the code. Let's get it to a good color first. That green was kind of obnoxious. Here we go, a nice blue. I like this blue. All right, so here we have the main app, okay? React, think of React like a tree, right? There's a lot of trees in programming I've learned. Everything's a tree pretty much, right? But the main file that you have, so you have a parent file, right? And your parent file can contain functions and variables, okay? Now, as the tree branches downward, this is a downward branching tree, each of the children can access those functions or variables, all right? And no matter how far down you go, they can always access the parent variable. So whatever you put in the parent file is accessible in any of the children. Now the children in React are called components, all right? And I'll show you guys what I mean here. So here we have our parent, the function app, and inside we have some deconstructed variables. We have color one and set color one, color two, set color two, color three, set color three. Underneath that, we have a variable here called randomize, which accesses the set color one variable and changes it to a random number between one and 255. Easy enough so far, you following? All right. And now this is where we start seeing what React does. So underneath that, we have this return here. And in the return, we have a div, right? Oh, you're seeing div in JavaScript, that's JSX, baby. So you have the div here. And then inside this div, you have what looks like HTML items, right? I mean, that's the best way I can describe it. They look like divs or something in HTML, right? And again, that's JSX. Now, all we're doing here is calling on the children or the components that we made in their files. So over here, I have a component called cool div. Now, the cool div, it returns one div. Right, and inside there we style the background color. I won't get into that yet. I'll make sure we go all the way through. So we have one div here called cool div, and then we have color generator, which creates one button. All right, now if we go back to the parent, we can see our cool div that we made, and we see our color generator. And if we look back at the application, there's the cool div in the background, and there's the button with the color generator. So it puts everything on the same page. Now, Expanding on that, when I talk about passing on the variables and the functions, as you see here, we have our variables and our function. Three variables, one function. So we'll go to the cool div first. Now, inside of the cool div, we have style background color, okay? Again, this is JSX, and we're just styling the background color. All right, we're using some CSS here. All right, and we have RGB, which you guys know, red, green, blue values. And here we're changing the values. Now, normally it's a number value here, right? Like 255, 0, 175. If you guys know what color that makes, let me know in the comments below. If you're right, I'll give you a cookie, I promise. And don't cheat. But uh, so yeah, those are the values. Now, all I did here was use template literals to create variables for the colors, right? Color one, two, and three. Now, if you guys remember in our parent file in the app.js, color one, color two, and color three had a default value of 255, which if you don't know, 255 on each value in RGB is white. So the default values of color one, two, and three, if we go back to this and refresh, is white, right? Now, we go back to the cool div. So we see that we have color one, two, and three pulled from the parent into the component, all right? So whatever that is, Whatever changes happen to color one, two, and three will be reflected there. Okay, and that's all that is the div. Now, if we go to the color generator, the button that we set down there, and I don't know if I mentioned it before, but we import or we call upon those variables in the parent up here. We see color one, color two, and color three. That's me pulling those variables from the parent, like reaching down and pulling them, pulling them downward into the child file so we can use them there, okay? All right, so now if we jump over to our color generator, you can see that we're reaching up and we're grabbing that randomize function and pulling it down, okay? Now we've pulled down randomize into the button. And now here, if you look at the button itself, inside of the div, we have a on click. This is assigning an on click function to the button. So whenever you click it, randomize is gonna happen. Now, if we go back to the app and look at randomize, randomize is a function that calls the set color function up here and it changes the value inside of it 
to a random number between 1 and 255. All right, so every time the randomized function fires off, we get a different number, a different value for color one, two, and three. I guess I, we can get rid of that console log now. That's, that's how I checked to make sure it was working before I went too far. But we get a value for one, two, and three. And if we come down here to the app again, this is the parent, again, I'm in the, from the parent, you can kind of look downward and see what all the children are doing. So we have the first child, cool div, right? And the cool div needed something from us. The cool div needed color one, color two, and color three, right? And if we go over and look back at the cool div, there it is, color one, color two, and color three. So the child component is asking the parent for color one, two, and three. Now it's up to the parent to pass that child color one, color two, and color three. So if you look at here, we're looking down this, so if we look at the cool div where it says color one here, this is the cool div asking for color one. In the brackets here, this is the parent giving color one to the child. And it's the same thing here with color two. Child component says, hey, I need color two. Parent passes down color two, and then again with color three. All right, and it's the same thing for the color generator button. The color generator component child is asking, hey, we need randomize. And then from here, you're just passing it randomized. And when you mix all of this together, you get this fancy, blissful little change color button. Did you look at that? It's pretty cool, huh? It's pretty cool. I like it. I like it. So I hope that helps you guys with React. If you're a beginner like myself, I try to keep things beginner friendly in the way I explained it. Now React gets far more complex than that. It can You can go so much deeper and there's so much that I myself don't even know about React yet, but on the simplest level, that's what React allows you to do. Very easy DOM manipulation and once you understand what's happening with state and properties, it's very easy to manipulate what's going on and then pass those variables and functions down to the children and call on them. That was the trickiest part for me. It really took me a while to wrap my head around the properties, the state, and using hooks. Now, ultimately I found hooks to be way easier to understand than the other ways of controlling state and passing down properties. But like I said, this was just to give you a little taste of React and see if it's something for you and see if it's something you're ready to try or wanting to try. I appreciate you guys for watching. Do stay tuned to have more content coming on the way. And if you're waiting for that Odin Project setup video, I am still editing that. That's, that's a beast. That was a lot longer than I thought it would be and required a lot more editing than I thought it would take. But I am going to have that out soon for any of you guys starting the Odin Project so I can help you guys get started and get your virtual machine set up and all that good stuff, okay? If you guys have any questions or anything you want to see or know about, let me know in the comments below. I always respond to you guys and I love seeing what's up. And if you haven't already, do follow me on Twitter. I'm doing the 100 days of code on there. I post daily updates with my code and everything that's going on. And um, yeah, hope to see you guys over there too, all right? That's the new it for this one. Peace.